Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, I have to tell you, I, I feel sorry for a lot of you people here. <laughs> I really admire you people for your diligence in what you're doing in this community. I hesitated. I was a little reluctant to come here uh, for a number of different reasons. I scribbled down some notes so I can go through it real quick here. But uh, New Mexico has a bad <coughs> reputation for its politics, and I hear it all over. I've been here for 18 years. Now I've wintered here. I'm just appalled at what I see out here. I could almost cry. It's tough. These cops got a tough job. You all have a tough job. There's a lot of issues out here. The people I've been talking to, including four businessmen at the Marble Brewery, where I have to have a beer once a week or so, <laughs> said to me, you're never going to change politics here. That's what these businessmen said to me, some of whom have worked here in the city. That's interesting. Not to mention what goes on in Santa Fe, but that's for another day. But I'm an outsider, and if you don't mind hearing from me, I'm, I'm almost 70 and I'm retired. I'm going to stay retired. But you know, after all of this, it's hard to shut up sometimes. So I'm a retired sheriff and a decorated veteran. I'm from the Midwest. And I'll tell you, I winter here and I love it here. I love the people. I love the culture. I love the food. God, I even like this guy. <laughs> you let me talk to him out in the lobby for a couple of minutes. He didn't know me from Adams. But I've got to tell you something. You've got a leadership problem out here. It's terrible. You don't have it just in the police department. You got it in City Hall, you got it in Santa Fe, and you got it all over. And I'll tell you what, people are discouraged, they're, they're fed up. Maybe why some like Trump, he's telling it the way it is. Maybe that's what I'm going to do, I don't know. But I'll tell you, your solutions are pretty clear to me. You just don't have the leadership here. You don't have good policy and procedures in that police department. And I guess uh, you're probably 20 years behind. And that's the secret to successful community policing, is good policy and procedures. And somebody up here that you can look up to that knows the chief's got your back. He's there to help you to make sure you do your job and do it well. And there better be a mayor that knows how to work with the police chief and not be the typical, typical mayor. Well, you're in dire straits here, and I feel sorry. And I got six quick points. You know, after all these millions of dollars wasted, you know, I'm really wondering, after this chief's been here two years, he knew what he was getting into, and they hired him. What do you expect's going to get done here in the next three, six months, 12 months? I don't see much has been done in the last two years since he's been here. I hear he's a hell of a nice guy. Well, that's fine. I'm a pretty nice guy, too. But that doesn't get the job done all the time. Now, I don't know enough about him, and I might be speaking out of turn, but I guess what I'm saying is you need to either Require him to get it done quickly, or you need to find somebody else who can do it. And you may need some direction how to do a national search to bring in a chief here with some experience, 20 years younger, that has the ambition to do it. And I don't know that that's happening here. And I think you need some desire. You need some ambition. You need a willingness. You need to know what you're doing. There might be some people inside that department that have what it takes to be interim chief if they can't do it here. Now, you need to set up a timetable here real quick, maybe I'm hearing that, on your use of force policies. Whether it's deadly force or using your taser, when to have your lapel collar on and all the rest of it. And this public defender probably didn't uh, say everything I necessarily agreed with, but I'll bet you half of what he said is the gospel truth. An awful lot was said here tonight, and I sympathize and agree with an awful lot of it. So I think you need a timetable to get some things done and done soon. And I think you need to promise the good men and women in that police department, and I think there's a lot of good ones. You need to promise them, the chief does, or whoever the city big shots are, that helps on the way. They don't have the right leadership. It's as clear as a bell. I've been through all this bullshit. Excuse me. Straight that. But back where I come from, we just got rid of the police chief because he couldn't cut the mustard. Citizen spoke up, and he's gone. Things have changed. You ought to see what's happened. That's right. That's what and out in the township where I live, they weren't doing it either. I got so sick of listening to that that a hundred of us went to the meeting and we told him to get out of town. He wouldn't. We went back with 125 two weeks later and with the media behind us, he's long gone and so is the town administrator. They have one of the best little police departments out in that rural township that you've ever seen. It's fully accredited in Wisconsin in less than four years. I don't see much happening here in the next four years. I really don't. You haven't shown me anything. I listened to the police chief interview. That's a nice man. 
I listened to two TV interviews. He didn't speak to you and me with any urgency. I don't know what they're doing there. But these young people that are working in this police department need to understand this culture. They need to understand the mental health issues here, the educational <laughs> issues here, the, the poverty and everything else. Being a cop out here is tough. And I've been there, it's not easy. I'm lucky I'm living. And I really admire all of you for coming here. I'm, gonna, I'm retired, I'm gonna stay retired. This winds me up when nothing gets done. And that's why we have a 20, million, 20 trillion dollar budget problem in Washington and that's why you're behind 20 years out here. You've got corrupt politicians that don't have the guts to stand up and do the right thing. And I did. But I didn't do it by myself because I surrounded myself with good people that were smarter than me, had more talent than me, and it worked. And I'm pretty damn proud of that. And these cops are good people, a lot of them. They need direction. And they need help. Now, I don't know if that made any sense to any of you, but I'm disappointed. I don't know if I made a decision buying a house out here and living near half the year. I, I just don't. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I will say, I will say though that um, coming from Wisconsin, you have uh, you have a hundred year old statute in place that allows the citizens to make those decisions uh, as it relates to the replacement of the chief. Where that statute doesn't exist here in New Mexico. Well, one thing I will say, and I'll shut up, is is that when the city council has a call the Department of Justice for help. And when they have to get an outside monitor to come in and help the police chief do his job. And then when they have to get a former judge, magistrate, or whatever he is, to come in and help with policy and procedure. That was my job as a sheriff and police chief. That's his job, not their job. You've got your job. So if the city hired, even knew what he was getting into. And I don't know what they did for a background search. I'm sure he's a great guy. Nothing's getting done here. And, and, and a year from now, What's going to be different? That's my challenge to this community. <coughs> now I'm going to leave and be retired. Right. And I hope it was helpful. Can we, can Thank we you. move on, please? I, Thanks. I mean, okay. We're taking all the air out of the room. Yeah. And I, and you did a beautiful job, I, sir. I, Thank I, you for coming here.